Hi everyone, welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today I've got a new piece of gear that I'm very excited to show to you. This here is the Alosun EM1230. This is a battery powered portable multimeter and oscilloscope. It seems to be pretty durable. It's got this butylene over molded case and it's very durable. You can see the button layout right here. You get the run, stop, voltage, uh, seconds per division. And right up here are your menu interface buttons. Auto, I've used it a couple times already. It works pretty good, I guess. At the top, uh, you can see one of my major complaints. Look right here and right here, the male BNC connectors are actually plastic. It's that red plastic right there. So I might do a video in the future on soldering new BNC connectors to the main board in there because I'm not comfortable at all with the plastic and the tolerances of the plastic seem like they're a little bit too tight. We'll see how this goes. Um, but you know the lugs that lock on your BNC connectors right there, they will eventually wear off. And I don't know if that's really gonna be an issue, but uh, it'll be a fun project anyway to change out those BNCs to a metal connector. So what comes in the box? Right here, you have the Alosun case. Pretty neat, it's sectioned off so that you have spots for your leads and different connectors. Your meter fits back there, you got software and you've got a very nice manual. It's got a DC power supply. It's got two sets of probes. You can see right here, it's got your little uh, probe adjustment calibration tool. This right here is a tip insulator for when you take off the clip, it just pops off. Both the probes are uh, one by 10, so you can select them. Also in the case are two gator clips, a USB cord so that you can either charge the meter or you can connect it to a PC and uh, get your recordings off it. It comes with a set of PVC insulated leads. Now on the probe itself, it says it goes up to a thousand volts on uh, cat three. I don't know if I trust that. You might trust that, but uh, I think I would rather uh, change out these leads to uh, maybe a set of fluke leads. You can see I have the tip insulators installed right there. I just took it off for you. So these tip insulators are pretty nice. They fit on pretty snug and they don't want to pop off very easily, which is a good thing. I have the meter currently set up on an ESU analyzer, which is connected to a bipolar Codman, and uh, this is going to be mainly for you uh, biomeds out there. It's going to show you how you would use one of these portable meters in the field. Also, in comparison, I've got a Tektronix TDS 2020. Oddly enough, you can see that I've got one of my probes connected to it because this meter, I can't find a calibration port to calibrate the probes. It's weird that it gave me a uh, calibration driver right here so I can adjust the resistor on the probe, but I don't have a port natively on the device. So you would have to rely on a signal generator or you can connect it to your more expensive Tektronix and use its calibration port, I guess. So I, I currently have it hooked up. Channel one is hooked up and it goes over to the Tektronix and channel two it's running down here to the oscilloscope output of my electrosurgical generator. And when I depress the Codman foot control, there you go. You can see it scanning and seeking. It actually has a pretty fast seek uh, for what it is. I mean, this meter cost me $250. So the fact that it can seek out a signal reasonably quickly and it be accurate is it's something to be said. Now the menus on this guy leave a little bit to be desired, okay? Unlike the Fluke unit where you have a button that changes it between scope and meter, this one, it takes a little bit of a trick to put it into multimeter mode uh, in order to use the probes. So in order to put this into multimeter mode, you put it on menu down here. And then I have to come up here to system and DMM. And now I'm in multimeter mode. The fact that I have to press multiple buttons to get it into a multimeter mode, oh, it 
really chaps my butt. But anyway, uh, you get what you pay for. I get that. And you can see it's got a beautiful color display, which has a very quick refresh rate. I'm not sure the count on the multimeter, but it seems to be pretty high. And also you can see right there, it's got a uh, battery indicator. It shows you the charge on your battery. Now this one charges with, I think it, it charges with regular five volt. It's got a 3.7 volt uh, lithium battery inside it. So another oddity for this meter is when it's in multimeter mode, you can see that I can put it on current or I can put it on resistor, which is ohms. It's very irritating. They, they call it resistor. Um, I guess I'll just get used to it. So you press the button once it's resistor. You press the button a second time and you can put it into continuity mode. So then your leads. You can see that the response time is very fast for continuity. And that's a huge plus for these meters because usually in cheap meters, they have like an analog circuit that determines whether or not you have continuity and it will just drive a little speaker internally. So this one is pretty good for what you could pay for, I guess. I mean, that's awesome. Right here, you can see I can change it between AC and DC. See that? There's, it's not very intuitive because you have to multi-press the button in order to select other menu options. I would rather press the button, it takes me into a menu, and then I, I use the arrow keys to select what option I want. But you do what you do, man. Um, so you can see right there, I put it in continuity mode. I haven't played around with it too much, and I'm working on it. It does have a lot of features and I'm going to have to read the manual. That's a given because a lot of the menus are hidden under multi presses of the button. And that's, that's unfortunate, but it is what it is for the price that you pay. I mean, with shipping and everything, it, I believe it was $280 to have a color display, two channel scope meter. I mean, that's, that's pretty good for uh, 280 bucks. I mean, that's cheaper than most fluke multimeters, let alone an oscilloscope with probes and everything. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you a little bit of a demonstration. I'm going to put it back into scope mode. Let's go menu. Return. Menu. Scope. And you can see. Oh, by the way, there is one other thing that really irritates me about this meter. Just... Maybe it's a small detail. I'm going to let it power down. You can see it shuts off very quickly. I like that. But when I depress the button to turn it on, you sometimes think that you don't have it because you have to hold it for like three or four seconds before it gives you the confirmation beep that, hey, I'm turning on. And that's that's unfortunate uh, because the first couple times I pressed it and I held it for like two seconds, it wouldn't turn on. I thought, oh, Jesus, my battery depleted. So I plugged it in, I let it charge and it still wasn't working. And then I thought, you know something, let's just try holding it down. So I held it down for like five seconds and it finally turned on. I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. So you can see the, the power button has got a little shroud around it so you don't accidentally press it. But I mean, like I said, it's got some bugs as far as, you know, like the fact that you got to hold the button down for an extended period of time to boot it up. But the meter does work and it works pretty darn good. You see right here, I can select channel A, channel B. It took me a second to figure out the triggering, which is right here on this button. So you press the trigger and then you press the arrows up and down. You can see I'm moving the trigger right there. Okay, I'm going to give it some bipolar energy. And I'm going to drop the trigger down. And we're going to put out channel B. And you can see all the different, you can change your coupling and stuff. Again, I am just experimenting with this meter. I haven't had it too long. I've just used it for displaying some of my waveforms from a couple of electrosurgical generators. You can see it's triggering really nicely on that square wave. And I did not calibrate the resistor on my probe. And the fact that it's coming in at almost a perfect square wave without me doing any calibrations on this bad boy, that's pretty good. I mean, even my Tektronix probes, uh, they've got a slight curvature to them and I have to calibrate the stupid things. Let's go ahead. I'm going to show you guys what these ports look like. Man, 
I don't even have the lug locked on. You can see that. And this guy. Er. So you can see I've only connected and disconnected just a couple times. And there's already a little bit of wear on that port. That's okay at the moment. Hold on, guys. Jeez. All right. And I disconnected the actual probe. Focus you. There it goes. Okay. I'm going to run just one channel so I don't confuse everybody on what's going on here. Try and press that guy down. It doesn't want to lock on too well. It doesn't really need to. It's a friction fit. Okay, you can see it seeks actually kind of quickly. And the reason that it doesn't lock on and give me a definite waveform is because these generators each pulse energy at a particular pattern and that pattern changes. And that's their proprietary design of every electrosurgical generator, the design of the waveform that will cauterize and cut tissue. I'm just going through some of the menus so that you guys can see what's going on. So I haven't done a recording yet. Maybe I'll get into that. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. So you can see right there as it's scrolling across. And let's go ahead and zoom in. Now you can start to see that typical bipolar waveform where it pulses in sequences. And you see these outline waveforms right here that are going like this. This is why the all meters, including this Tektronix over here, that's why they have such a hard time uh, getting a seek on the signal is because this outer pulse, it just randomizes it a little too quickly. And that's a typical bipolar output right there. All right, guys, that is the Allo Sun EM1230. It seems to be an excellent little meter. I just got to learn the menus. And uh, it comes with lots of good stuff. I'm going to put it all back in its bag. This guy is going to be very nice. One of the best things about having a battery-powered meter is that you don't have to worry about lifting the ground. On a typical scope meter, the ground, which would be this probe right here, and also which connects to the outer section of the BNC, it is normally connected straight to earth ground. And the problem with that is if you are novice, you connect it in the wrong way, you're doing a dead short to a hot and it'll create a dead short to ground and you'll melt your meter. So I don't have to worry about it with this one because it's battery powered and it's isolated by its nature. I hope you liked the video guys. This is an excellent meter. I will maybe do another video on changing out the BNCs. We'll see how the wear and tear goes on it. But it's a very nice little meter. The only outputs it's got right here are your power connector and your USB. And that little panel right there will pop on and hold it up. But uh, I really dig it. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you liked the video. Stay tuned. I'm going to have some excellent videos for you very, very soon.